Hi there, and welcome to Studio SN, your place for card making, rubber stamping, and paper crafting tutorials. My name is Sarah Newman, and I'm so very glad you're here. Today I want to show you an easy layered Christmas card featuring acrylic paints, stencils, and Duralar. So you can see on the background of my card, those great big circles, those have been stenciled onto white cardstock. And then the spattering that you see on top has been done on a piece of Duralar, which has then been layered on top. It's a really easy process to do and gives a beautiful soft and muted effect that I think is just perfect for Christmas cards. And it's super simple to do. So let's take a look at the process. First, I'm gonna bring in a piece of plain white cardstock, and this is just a smooth matte cardstock. I also need to have my stencil on hand. And the stencil that I'm using is PS100. This is one that I designed for Paper Artsy. And it's um, not necessarily designed for Christmas, but I think works for that quite nicely. So you've got the word imagine down here, the open circles, which is what we're going to be using. And then also um, this kind of blobby effect here on the side. This doesn't look like much on the stencil maybe, but when you do it with grunge paste, it looks really cool. So we're going to be working with this area here. And for this, I'm going to use some aquamarine paint. This is the fresco finish from Paper Artsy. It's a beautiful opaque paint. The other thing that I'm going to have on hand is a little piece of cut and dry. Now this is what I'm going to be applying my paint with through the stencil. Cut and dry is from Ranger. It comes on a bigger sheet and you just cut little pieces off to use as is. This is the spongy part and then this is a kind of firmer sponge that really gives you something to hold on to as you're stenciling. So this is what I like to use when I'm stenciling, especially through a kind of detailed stencil like this one here. So I put a little bit of my paint onto my craft sheet and I'll just pop my stencil down here. Now, if you want to, you can secure the ends with a bit of um, masking tape or washi tape, but it's not necessary if you're just gonna do a little bit. So I've picked up some of that paint on my piece of cut and dry and I'm just going to lightly work this through the stencil. And you don't need to put on a whole lot, you just want to get enough to fill in the open areas here. And this is where the cut and dry really does make it a lot easier to get just the amount of paint you want without sort of globbing it on, um, like I tend to do if I'm using a, a paintbrush with this. And the cut and dry is also great if you're edging your cardstock as well with paint. So I think I've got this all on here, maybe a little bit there as well. And here too. And the corner makes it easy to get into some of the detail areas. And then I'm just going to lift this off, lift it straight off. And there you can see I've got my cool stenciled effect. So then all I need to do is set this aside and let it dry. And while that is drying, then I can do my Duralar piece. So Duralar is a really cool um, substrate that you can work on. Now this is how it comes in a pad. This is a nine inch by 12 inch pad. And Duralar comes in a couple of different forms. So there's a clear and then there's also the matte and the matte is what I'm using here. And you can see that underneath you've got my hand, which has been ghosted back. So this is a little bit like vellum in the sense that it will ghost back whatever you're layering it on top of. Unlike vellum though, it works beautifully with wet medium like acrylic paint. So it's not going to warp and it won't buckle. You can also do some heat embossing on it as well. So I love using this for layering. It's really thick and sturdy. You can cut it with scissors, you can die cut it as well. So lots of options with that. So what I'm going to do is spatter on some more of the aquamarine paint as well as some gold. And for that, I'm gonna be using my Distress uh, Tim Holtz splatter brush. You can see these nice long bristles here are gonna give me a really fine spattering effect. So what I'll do is add a little bit more of the aquamarine to my craft sheet. And I'm also going to work in a little bit of gold here as well. Now my gold is coming a bit to the end of the bottle, so I'm gonna get out as much as I can. And then also add some water to both of these. So I'll put some water right next to each one of those puddles. And 
get some of that water on my brush and pick up some of that aquamarine right onto the ends of the bristle. And then I'll position this above and just splatter this everywhere. This is going to give me a finer misting than I would get with my normal technique of um, spattering with a water brush or a paint brush. I think you can see how that is showing up on here. Now let me bring in this blue piece so that you can see it maybe a little bit better. Okay, so then what I can do, I'll just kind of clean off a little bit with the, the baby wipe, clean off that spatter brush and pick up some of the gold. It's okay if they get a little bit mixed. And again, spattering on here. So I don't have to wait for the aquamarine to dry before I add that gold. Now I'm going to splatter on here quite a lot because I do want to take advantage of the muting effect of that Duralar and creating some nice shadows. And I also want this to really show up as well. I'm gonna do quite a bit of splattering on here. Okay. So I have my beautiful gold, I have my beautiful blue, and when I pop this on top of my stencil piece, it's going to create a really soft and beautiful effect. So then I just need to let my Duralar piece dry. It's not gonna take very long to dry. If I need to speed it up, of course, I can use a heat tool, but while that's drying, then I will get ready for my stamping. So my stamped focal has been created with some acrylic paint as well as stamping ink on here. So this is all one stamp together and I'll show you a little trick for how to get two different colors from one stamp. And of course we're going to be using the Misty for that one. Now the stamps that I'm working with are from the Eclectica ESN 39 stamp set. So you've got lots of big Christmas botanicals on here and sentiment and some stars. The image that we're going to use is this one down here at the bottom, so you can see it's that um, leafy collage design, plus the Tis the Season. This is also part of the same stamp set. So what I'm going to do is bring in my Misty, and you can see I've got my stamp already on one side of the tool, and then I've also got my white cardstock secured in place with those magnets on the other side. Now when I'm working with paint, I really like to make sure that I've got my magnets positioned as close to that stamp, as close to the edges of the stamp as possible, rather than having um, a great big piece of cardstock and having the magnets way off to the side. I think that this just helps to get a, a better control when you are doing your stamping. Now I'm going to be using some acrylic paints for this. So I've got my aquamarine, I've got a little bit of that gold, and I've also got some lawn. And this is also the Paper Artsy Fresco Finish. And I have to say, I just think that these three colors together work so beautifully, uh, not only for Christmas cards, but I think also for other occasions too. So that's gold, aquamarine, and also lawn. Now to ink up my stamp or to paint up my stamp, I'm going to also be using a piece of this cut and dry, and I'm still using the same piece that I used for my stenciling. And I'll just pick up a little bit of the aquamarine again on here, and I'm tapping the color on. I'm going to avoid the sentiment because I don't want that to be stamped in um, paint. So I'm gonna be pretty careful with this. If you want to, you could sort of mask it off with a little bit of tape, but I find that this stamp in particular has uh, enough room between those to make, uh, make it a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna come in with my lawn and then pick up a little bit of that gold last. And I'm not covering the entire um, image with just one color, I'm just kind of overlapping some things. And then what I'll do, come back in with my Mr. Bottle and just give maybe one or two quick mists. I'm also going to come in with my finger and just make sure I haven't gotten any paint around on the edge where that might um, create a kind of halo effect. And then what I'll do is just simply close this up and press and then lift. And I have a kind of beautiful multicolored effect. I've got the green, I've got the gold, I've got the blue. So I've got this part down. Now I want to get the sentiment on here. So I'll just come in with a cloth 
or dry baby wipe and just remove the excess layer of paint on here. I want to keep my stamp on the misty, so I don't want to take it off and um, clean it off. I want to make sure that I'm leaving it in place so that I get the same positioning with my sentiment. And just kind of dab that off. Make sure that it's dry. And then I also find it really helpful to grab a piece of masking tape and just pop this down on here just to cover up the areas where the, bot the botanical part is. And then I'm gonna come in with my black ink, and this way, when I ink up the sentiment, I can make sure to get the ink pad in here, and I don't have to worry about trying to, to work around the leaves on here. Then here's the important part. Be sure to lift off the tape and then you can come back and stamp your sentiment and lift. And then you're able to get not only that painted effect, but also the stamped effect on there as well. So let's take a look at the card project one more time and take a look at how it's all been put together. So I've got this mounted up onto some teal cardstock. I just added a few little um, embellishments here to highlight the little berries that are on the on the leaves. Glued everything together. Now, if you're wondering about how to glue down that Duralar, I use just a regular glue stick for this, and you just want to have a bit of a light touch. Be sure to secure it mostly where you're going to put something down on top, but you can definitely have adhesive along on the edges as well. It won't show through quite as much as you would expect Certainly not with, um, as the same with vellum. So glue that two, those two pieces together onto the card front. I've got some ribbon going around here, a little bow, and then I've got a pretty easy, beautifully layered um, Christmas card featuring paints, stencils, and a new favorite, Duralar. Thank you so much for joining me today on Studio SN. If you enjoyed today's show, Please subscribe to Studio SN on YouTube and I'll keep you updated on the very latest stamping and card making videos. In the meantime, please feel free to stop by my website, sarahnewman.com, for more paper crafting ideas. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you again next week.